Hi guys, welcome to this week's What Half. I hope you're all well. Me and Gareth are still here. We've both got shorter hair or bigger heads. You decide. Lower ears. Lower ears. Um, you've been dressing up lately. Well, the, I'm thinking now this might sort of play into the hands of the he's a transgender the free racer, but um, when Gemma was pregnant with Ophi, right, she bought this big nighty, but like a maternity nighty, right? And honestly, it's the most comfortable thing. So I was getting really, um, I was getting my comfies on, right, to go downstairs and, and chill out. And I saw it and I went, I'll put that on. So I put it on. Honestly, Rich, it was the most comfortable thing in the world. I was just literally like, oh, mate, women have it. So, And then I'm thinking that's not actually that f sort of like cross-dressy because back in the old days in Victorian times when the men were hard as nails, mm. they wore like nighty type things, didn't they? At on, you know, like fucking, what's his face? Scrooge. Anyway, so I put it on. I came downstairs. She sent me right back upstairs. Get that off. And so, not, not even in a good way. Oh, you no, thought... not even in a good way. She didn't follow me upstairs. No. Right? Just, you know, <laughs> So um, I want one. So I was looking on Timu, which is like a, you know, a new website where everything's just really cheap and shit. If what, I'm honest. Did you, what did you put in for that? Like maternity dress for men? Well, I can't remember what I put in. In fact, I don't think I put in anything. I think I was just scrolling, but it comes up with different things. And I saw, I thought, ah, oh, that'll do. And so it's arrived and it's not. It's like an Islamic dress, isn't it? <laughs> is that what you sent me the picture of? Yeah, me wearing that. <laughs> So it's arrived, and I've unfolded it. Right, I get it now. I thought and you I'm were dressed honest. as deaf. I thought it was for a skit for work. No, so basically, I was I was telling Aidan about e, um, Timo the other day. And I was going, like, look, this is how much I paid. Like, this is how much I paid for that, like, night dress thing. And he's obviously looked at it and gone, I don't think that's a night dress, mate. <laughs> and um, so then it's arrived, and I've put it on, and it is. If I've got sandals on and a big beard, I'm in the club, right? But I've bought it now, and oh. it's really comfy. So I wore it to bed. Gemma's like, what is going on? She will wake up like in the night and think she actually passed over. If you yeah. stand at the end of the bed, like with yeah, the broom, black. Yeah, with the broom, yeah, hold the not... broom at three in the morning when she wakes up, stand at the end of the bed, see what happens. I should have got a white one, really. But then you're in trouble if you scratch your ass in your sleep, aren't you? Do you know what oh, I mean? You're better yeah. off black. Yeah, so, Adidas stripes. But what's funny is like, when I put it on and I come down, um, even Ophi, remember she's only one, right, it's gone... <laughs> Even she's acknowledged that there's something quite odd about what I'm wearing. But yeah, so I've worn it two nights in a row. So in the night last night when I was clambering down to get in it with Ophi, right? I'm there in full fucking regalia. <laughs> and I think it's funny. It's Someone like might Jesus. hear this and think it's offensive, but it's not offensive. It's is not it? offensive. It's just funny. It's you in your own house. Sometimes yeah. I sometimes I dress up as Hitler and run around the living room. My house, my rules. Yeah, I'll dress up as I want. Yeah, you should see my closet. I've got Mara Hindley, I've got Hitler, I've got Pol Pot. That's a good one, Sundays. Pol Pot, was he the one that played for Man United, French lad? I don't know. Was that Paul Pogba? Paul Pogba. I was getting, I, I was getting too confused. Pol Pot, Pol Pot, great name, great name. Um, yeah, no, I thought when you sent me the photo, I thought you were dressing up as death for a, like a work skit. So I genuinely thought you were dressed as death. I couldn't figure out what was going on. So I think I no. just sent you a picture of my face or something. But um, yeah. Yeah, good. It looks lovely. lovely. It's hella comfy, mate. I can I can see why they do it. I mean, I don't think that's they, why they, they do, do it because they're pregnant. Karen. I think I think there's a no. I was talking about the Islamic dress. Oh, I think they do it because that's you know the rules in it in 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 that particular religion. But I I just it's comfy. I get it now. Yeah, yeah, I, I get it so. now. Well, if if you had a fire at, at night, God forbid, or you had to stand out in the street at two in the morning, you'll have a hell of a thing to explain to the neighbours. Don't judge me, mate. Did you do that? That's all I'll say. Don't judge me, mate. Yeah. <laughs> judge me. I've seen you in your, your bathroom, what you do. Yeah. Right. So, houses. <laughs> let's, um, where can they get their CBD from, though? They can go to supremecbd.uk and use the code WTAF and they'll get 40% off everything, which is unbelievable. Um, I've been asked by marketing to ask you about classified this week, right? I probably shouldn't have said the fact they asked me to ask. They should try no. Forget that, everyone. But right. it's organic. <laughs> How are things, Rich? What, who's on Classified this week? Well, um, funny you should ask that. Um, it is I've pretty funny, thinking, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. <laughs> Our Thorazine is on this week, talking about how he can translocate demons, how demons can translocate from you to me. So say I'm an exorcist or therapist and I'm working my magic on you. 
I've got to be careful not to translocate the demon onto me. And what we should be doing is transforming dark to light. And that's not a QAnon thing. That, that sounds quite interesting. This week on my show, thanks for asking, Rich. That's okay. Who's um, on your show? I'm speaking to Monica um, Smith of Reignite Australia, uh, Democracy Australia, who's been like put in jail and stuff. It's totally crazy. Solitary confinement for 22 days for sharing a post about a protest. Wow. Is she the lady that came talk. in to the... Yeah, she came to the studio. Yeah, she's, she's a fucking warrior. I, tell you, I wouldn't Jesus. I wouldn't fight her. Um, so she was she was really interesting. Um, Robin Tilbrook, who's just won four... He's a solicitor. He's just won 426K for a victim of uh, Rotherham Grooming Gang. Wow. Yeah, Amazing. Bosh. Um, off of one guy as well. And um, and then we've got the guy... Um, see, I was calling him, him Howard. Howdy. He's Howdy, but I called yeah. him Howard the whole way through the interview. And he, well, he looks correct. a little bit like the one from Take That, so I get him mixed up. I thought his name was Howard. It's Howdy. McCowski. But I thought Howdy was just like, that's like a nickname. Yeah, that's what I thought as well. I called him Howdy anyway, because it was Howdy on everything. But um... Well, he's called Howard. He's not. Oh, on the show. <laughs> he didn't correct me. Didn't he? But he? No, but he was really interesting as well, talking about the reincarnation trap. Yeah, um, he's great. Which was which was interesting. And I put some questions to him um, from the, few, uh, the iconic members um, that they'd actually left in comments on your classified show. Yes, which is out every Wednesday at 7 p.m. When your show out is out on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Right. Mm. This is not why people are tuning in, is it? But I've done what I was asked. Um, first story, Richard. Go on. Dylan Mulvaney. Sexy. Yeah, so for anyone who doesn't know who Dylan Mulvaney is, he's the Bud Light guy. So he, he's, he's not even pretending. He's still called Dylan. But basically... That's what I don't get. He's had a full... like He hasn't had the tackle off, has he? But he's had a lot no, of face he's, surgery. He's had a bit of facial surgery, and that's it. So he's still not had breast implants or um, cock and ball. He just tucks that. Just can't be comfortable. But he he's amazing to me, right? Because he's actually... He's actually less predatory than that weird fucking Jeffrey guy we were talking about last week. The that guy, teeth. yeah, he's 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 a hard drive check that geezer. But Dylan is, you know, he just kind of is what he is. But he's gone on an incredible journey, and he's taken us with him. Right. So he was a gay man, very very camp, very over the top. Went on on um, game shows and stuff in America, and was rolling around on the floor when he got a question right. <laughs> and very true. Sorry. Like, like they all do. Like you all do. Then he was a woman, which was incredible. Um, and now he's a lesbian. So what he's done is he's gone on a journey from gay man to straight man. Yeah. And he's taken us all along the ride. And I kind of appreciate that. It's been quite a journey. Um, the reason I bring right. him up I today... Get I get it, yeah. ...is he's charging, and being paid, $40,000, right, to give speeches at university campuses about womanhood. So he's never been a woman. That's like me and you getting, like, if, like, the council rang us up and said, do you want to come into the college this week and speak about um, about mechanics and how to kind of uh, fix the spoiler onto the back of your car and, and change the gearbox? We would be like, depends how much you're paying me, to be honest. 40k, mate. <laughs> I am there. It's basically like the BBC playing that, paying that taxi driver that ended up in the studio that time. Do you remember that? We need for the industry and the growth of music online. Well, Guy Cuny is the editor of the technology website uh, News Wireless. Hello, good morning to you. Good morning. For people around the world, right, you can find it on YouTube. There's a taxi driver who's turned up in reception at the BBC. He don't speak a lot of the Queen's English, does he? No. And, um, He's waiting to pick someone up, and obviously a runner's come down and gone, are you the guy? And he's gone, yeah, I'm the guy, thinking they mean <laughs> the, the taxi driver. <laughs> and the next thing he knows is he's, he's all mic'd up and in makeup. At that point, I'd have started asking questions. He, he would doesn't. Have done, yeah, he would. doesn't. Were you surprised by this uh, verdict today? I'm very surprised to see this verdict to, to come on me, because I was not expecting that. So it goes live, and they start asking him questions about... Um, digital music and mp3s and whether that's the end of cds or whatever and instead of going i'm sorry guys i'm literally here to pick up one of your colleagues to take him to the um, um to train the broth, station the station sorry yeah. um he just goes along with it he goes yes i think it is the end of cds and he blags it and i love that i respect that about him 
Uh, actually, if you can go everywhere, you're going you're gonna to see a lot of people downloading uh, to the internet uh, and the website, uh, everything they want. But it's the equivalent of the BBC, then after that going, you were brilliant, we're going to give you 40k in appearance to come on and talk about digital music. <laughs> Every week? Every week? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. So what is he going to tell them then? Like, I mean, what, what about womanhood? He's, he's what so, was you thinking as a woman sat it, in the audience? Well, there's a gay man up there who kind of looks like a Chinese woman now, but is also a lesbian. And I'm confused and I'm hungover from last night, quite frankly, because the because um, of the student bar. I don't know, bar yeah. yeah, I don't know what I, what I did with my purse. Um, maybe Dylan's got it. What's going on? It's bonkers, isn't it? I mean, he, his facial surgery he's had is, is based on um, Audrey Hepburn as well. Do you see that? Oh, well, I can see that. That's, That's not yeah, bad. Yeah, no, totally. It's better yeah. than a David Beckham one. And you're looking at it like... Do you remember that guy that paid 20 odd grand to look like David <laughs> Beckham? That's what I mean, yeah. Wow. He, so he's paid 20 grand to look like <laughs> David Beckham, right? But what he's not done is spent £26 a month to get a gym membership to try and lose, like, two stone. It's like... Do you know when in Teletubbies where they put the kid's face on the sun? Yeah. It's like they put a bit of David Beckham's face on his on his chubby gubbins. I can't believe you spent 20 grand to look like James Corden. On <laughs> David Beckham, mate. <laughs> oh. oh. This is awkward. <laughs> but yeah, so Dylan Mulvaney, so you're sat there in the audience and you're like, basically, I'm being lectured on womanhood by Audrey Hepburn with a cock. <laughs> Who'd have thought? 2023, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. You never know what's going to happen. It's an exciting time to be alive, Gareth. It's an exciting... I'm just glad he took us on that ride from gay man to straight man. <laughs> Brilliant. I know. I know. Bless him. Um, it's all, all got a bit weird, though, isn't it? Snow White's got... She's got a face over, uh, an overhaul. Um, Snow White's gone gone woke. Um, Snow shite, I've put it here. Is. Feminists destroy another Disney character. This time it's Snow White. Um in this version, and I don't know who the actresses are, but you'd recognise them. Um, basically, Snow White has no prince to rescue her because it's too. She's a strong feminist woman who is going to um, be a leader and be the leader she can be, and she doesn't need a man to rescue her in the new Snow White. And I probably assume that she's got a cock and balls as well. Um, that's basically where it is. So they've rewritten a story. You said you were bringing a modern edge to it. It's no longer 1937, and we absolutely wrote a Snow White that she's is not going to be yeah, saved by the prince. She's not going to be saved by the prince, and she's not going to be dreaming about true love. She's dreaming about becoming the leader she knows she can be, and the leader that her late father told her that she could be if she was fearless, fair, brave, and true. Don't. This is what I don't get about it, guys. Like, why don't you just write new stories? Well, exactly. That's, yeah. Because they were whinging about that a long time ago, but because she was obviously passed out because she'd eaten. she eaten a poisoned apple? Is that the story? Is that Snow White? She's, she's lying there in I a... I think Snow White. Basic, basically I get that mixed up with Sleep and Beauty, to be honest. Which is you when might, you, you, is you, when you, might you be lay right. on your hand and it goes numb. This is true, yeah. You might be right, actually. The two might be... Yeah, all right, I probably got that confused. No, but I think you might be either right. Either way, one or the confused. other, there was an issue about it because they were asleep, so Sleeping Beauty, or in some sort of coma trance, and then a, a kiss from a prince was is what would save them. Yeah. So the prince comes in, gives them a kiss, they wake up, they come back to life, life's great, but the prince didn't ask consent. Is so that that's what they an saying? issue. Yeah, that's an issue. You can't just kiss someone who's passed out. And I get that well, if it's at a nightclub. But this is a fairy There's tale. There's one. Of course, this... she's a... John, she's asleep. This John. is a fairy tale. In you go. Clive, not that end. John and Clive. It's <laughs> definitely John and Clive. Isn't John it? and Clive. John and Clive are in the SU bar and they left uni 20 years ago. They're still there. They're still there, yeah. They are, yeah. Hey, Kissing sleep. silk shirt on. <laughs> 2020. He's been leaning on that bar for 16 years. Kissing sleeping women. Winkle pickers will come back. I don't think they will, mate. I don't think they will. You're just going to get stuck in a drain on the way home again. Ugh. Like, so, yeah, they've got it. I don't understand why they just don't write new stories. It's absolutely fine. Because these fuckers have got stories. no imagination, Rich. That's the point. Well, no, you're right, actually. Yeah, reptilians, they don't, do they? They don't have any... What is it called? Creative noose. They don't have um, any creativity. Yeah, so they just manipulate what's there already. It's a good point, actually. 
Um, I didn't think of it like that. But yeah, they don't have any creativity. They no. just be able to twist things, and for political reasons, obviously. And these two are woke as you like, going, oh, she's she's a strong feminist woman. It's a fairy tale that obviously has some morals somewhere. And what? There. And what is a woman now, anyway, mate? Well, exactly. Don't even tell me that. What How do you know that's a prince? Woman? How do you know it's a prince? It might have been a, a a lady prince that's come in, and she's given her a little peck on the. She's give her a little peck on the lips. Is that worse? Fuck knows. Right, yeah. this one ties into yours, Rich. I had this one like much further down my list, but it works perfectly with what what you're saying. And all I thought when I saw this was, imagine living your life looking for things to be offended by, or upset by, or pissed off by. That's called being a wife. But, <laughs> fair point. But it's, I couldn't live like that. Like, you know, people go to the cinema. The whole, the whole point of going to the cinema is one, to get rinsed and go bankrupt. That's one. <laughs> the other is to enjoy yourself, surely, and relax and try and escape from essentially reality, the, the, the monotony of going to work and being a husband or a wife and a mother and a father and cleaning up and all that. Bite. I love it. You said it's monotony of all of that wonderful stuff. The fucking... Well, just, sh- just get away from the shit of life. <laughs> yeah, just sit there and for an hour, an hour and a half, two hours, whatever, just be transformed into another world, which is of almost like a virtual reality, isn't it? You're in- ingratiated in the story. Basically, uh, leave me the fuck alone. Yeah, and then you come back and you get home and there's fucking vomit on the floor and it's you know it all starts again. So to then ruin that one a bit of escapism is extraordinary to me. Tanya Roth, doctor, fuck me, doctor Tanya Roth, she her. No. Yeah, not even in the bio, actually in her fucking name. <laughs> Better right? than she her, I suppose. So she's talking about a film Oppenheimer, right? So this is a film, obviously about the Nazis and Nazi technology and whatever, and Oppenheimer. Um, H- H- H-bomb, was it? Yeah, trying to withhold, or people trying to withhold it from the Nazis. Anyway, so it's not really about she, her, bollocks, if I'm honest. It's kind of, you know, anyway, so fun fact. It doesn't sound fun. Fun fact, no women speak until 20 minutes into hashtag Oppenheimer, and then within a minute, there's a sex scene, right? <clears throat> Are you sitting there waiting for that game? Right. Fucking hell. What is the... Okay, well, you're here, Tanya, because of a sex scene. So, like, whatever. It gets worse, though. To add to this... No one asked her to. To add to this, no people of colour appear for at least 30 minutes. And I believe there are two black men in the entire movie. Because it's the fucking Nazis. Yeah, if I'm... They yeah, weren't known for hanging around with all sorts of uh, different ethnicities. Yeah, and it's also, you know, 1930s Europe. <laughs> not 2023 Europe. It's a different world, mate. Yeah, it's not fucking Leicester. It's... it's it, I just don't understand how you could go... And that's that's your takeaway from the film. I mean, it must have been a really shit film. If that's you, what she's mentally ill, that's why. And that's what worries me, is that they're mentally ill and they're doctors. And they've ushered a bunch, and we've said this so many times, and I've been witness to this myself, a bunch of morons into positions of, um, not power, but responsibility, that they have no idea why they are there or what to do with it. And that's the problem, is that you get the idiots to to rule the world for you. Yeah, they, they, they have such influence they do. over particularly young people. And you're like... This is my, and I found that the other week, you know, because one of those, I might have spoke about this last week, if I did shut me up, so I don't repeat myself, but one of those um, Twitter accounts that like no context human or whatever, like one of those ones that's got loads of followers and they just tweet random stuff. And it said like four words to ruin a a first date. Can you move to your right a little bit? You've disappeared off the screen a little bit. Sorry, is that right? Well, yeah, yeah, go on, sorry, carry on, but yeah, yeah that's better. Yeah. Four, four words to ruin a first date. So I just wrote, so my pronouns are, right? And, because that would ruin a first date for me. Yeah. And the comments, some of them, were just like, why would you not ask someone's pronouns? Why would you? Because if I have to ask, it's not a date I want to be on. Simple as that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm interested in, well, I'm not, I'm married. But if I was single again, I'm interested in dating a woman a adult human female. Yeah. If I'm not sure that that's the case, <laughs> I don't think they're for me. 
it's like it's like when you're on the dating app and you go, you flick it and you go. Da, 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 da. Well, I'm not sh- not sure about this one. Shall we spin the wheel? It's mad, isn't it? Is that a lad or a woman? I don't know, but fuck it. It's not how people think. Oh. It's not how people think. I've grown up so much in the last ten years. <laughs> Any old's a goal. <laughs> Norwich. Yeah. It's nineteen ninety nine. Oh, I was back in the day with the light bar, yeah. Back in hell, freezing cold. Queuing up outside. I think she's got webbed feet. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. She'll stick to the walls. Um, Right, yeah, no, I don't know where I'm going with this. I've lost my train of thought. No, she can't wear flip-flops. And that's a good thing, because the noise is annoying. Well, she's stuck to the flip-flop. So if you have webbed feet, you'll get stuck inside your shoes. That's like Superman trying to touch himself when he's at Superman. (laughs) Spider-Man. When he's touching himself when he's on his own, does it just accidentally go off in your hair? <laughs> You're like, oh, right, yeah. When do you turn your superpowers off? I don't know where I'm going with this. Right, no, next either. one. Guys, it's your turn. Okay. Um, this one made me laugh. Um, the Pope is selling time off of purgatory. Did you know why? Go on, he's skin. Well, he is skin. Yeah, well, he's not his, his money, is he? Vatican offers time off purgatory to followers of Pope Francis' Twitter. At this point, it, you know, I mean, I'm not a religious man. I like to think I'm quite a spiritual person, but I'm not a religious man. If you follow organised religion at this point, you must be going, this is a con, isn't it? <laughs> Hang on a minute. I've had my issues from, like, day one, but I was born into this shit. But, come on. So, p- the papal court handling pardons for sin says con- contrite Catholics may win indulgences by following World Youth Day on Twitter. Ugh. Don't put world youth and indulgences together in the same sentence. It is the Catholic Church. Well, that's what people might talk. So it says, you can't obtain indulgences like getting a coffee from a vending machine, Archbishop Claudio Mario Selli, head of Pontifical Council of Social Communications. They've made that up, haven't they? Is that... What's wrong with getting a coffee? Read the general manager to the regional manager. Told the Italian something I can't bother to pronounce. Indulgences these days are granted to those who carry out certain tasks, such as climbing the sacred steps in Rome, reportedly brought from Pontius, Pontius Pilate's house for Jesus after Jesus scowled them before his crucifixion. He didn't. What did he do? He'll crawl up them? No, like Spider Man. No. <laughs> That didn't happen. <laughs> uh, a feat that earns believers seven years off purgatory. So if you go to these steps, you get seven years off. It's like starting, am I, like, if I come to this planet, am I going to start at minus, minus 70? I'll go minus 70. Okay. So if I'm going in at minus 70, it's like handicapped. You're born handicapped. It's like golf. Yeah. You literally <laughs> can. So how can... comes John, how comes John, is, he's got, he's, he's going in at minus four. He was a nonce in the last life. Yeah, but there's Matt Hancock just running up and down the stairs like, bang. That's what he was training for. It wasn't the London Marathon. <laughs> like going Rocky. Up those stairs. <laughs> it's not Rocky, it's mate. Wrong. The guy's alone. <laughs> um, but attendance at events such as the Catholic World Youth Day in Rio de Janeiro, a week-long event starting on the 20th of July, good plug, can also win in win an indulgence. So these are called indulgences. Mindful of the faith who cannot afford to fly to Brazil... The Vatican Sacred Apostles Penitentiary, a court which handles the forgiveness of sins. They've actually got a court for that. Fucking hell. It, it, this sounds like Twilight. It's mad, isn't it? I didn't know any of this existed, actually. It may as well be the Volturi. <laughs> well, it's, it's probably, obviously, quite clearly what it's actually <laughs> made after. Has also extended the privilege of to those following the rites and pious exercises of the event on television radio and through social media so if you watch it you get time off purgatory so if you go to confession you know i'll confess my sins um uh reverend or priest or whatever you're called holy father um i've been up to no good you've disappeared off again what's that more here i don't know i'm not moving though but i think the table must be moving i've i've been up to no good um you know i've been going into i've been pretending i'm a woman and going into a woman's Bathrooms and being like a bit, you know, wrong and really. Um, and so I'm going to go and burn in the depths of hell, aren't I? I don't really know what to do. And and the, the reverence is there going, if you downloaded Twitter, <laughs> give him a follow. Yeah. And we'll forget about it. All right. Have you got, have you got X on your phone? 
Yeah, I've got it extra. That's X. That's X N X X. That's it's not the same one. But if you scroll down, that's a vagina. There's there's some of that on Twitter, but um, this is a different app. You're gonna have to get rid of that one. That's at least minus thirty. Get up those stairs, son. <laughs> get your knickers off. Um, yeah, it is weird, isn't it? So that's what you're doing now. So you can get time off purgatory, um, if you uh, follow the Pope on Twitter and World Youth Day. So just remember, if you've done something naughty today, jump on X. It's a mad world. Um, talking about a mad world, I saw a um, few photos from the Avignon Festival in France last night, right? Which has got there's a big a big black woman who has a pole, like a spike coming out the front, a spike coming out the back, with white babies on it. Oh, Dolls. I've seen this. Oh, gross. I forgot about it. And then there's a lad, another black lad with a thing over his shoulder with um, four uh, dead, supposed to signify, I imagine, dead white babies on a pole. And you're looking at it like, uh, what is going on? What is that the, about? Well, it's a, a festival. It's got 100,000 people at it. And you're like... Imagine that in reverse. But what's the point? I was, well, exactly. What, what, what is the point? It's is... disgusting and, and horrible and sick and fucked up. But what? what but it just goes to show. She's trying to get across. Well, I, I don't. Well, I don't like us very much. She's clearly not a fan. Um, but you look at it and you just think how normalised that is. Because that, in reverse, would have. And I mean, fucking arrested immediately. Or people would have stormed. Mm. People would have stormed the stage. Yet you will have an audience full of white folk just going. And they'll know it's fucking weird, yeah. and they'll know it's sick, but they're too frightened to say anything. So they're like, oh, that's... Well, I don't want to say anything. I don't... Do you know what I mean? And you're just like, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with that person? What is wrong with... If someone has that much hate in them, can we call it out, please? Yeah. Uh, to be... Like, that's not... She's not just turned up and joined in. You know, like, she's made it at home, and she's gone, I'm just going to turn up on the day and jump the barrier... Who's going along with it? So I've got an idea. All right, go on. Okay, that's fucked up. That's fucked up. Can you draw it first? Oh, God. That's yeah, awful. Can... yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I mean, but if you're going instead, to... It's like, yeah, go... no, that'd be fine. No one's going to give a shit. No one's saying anything. Just like that home base, buying all the bits. Like, what are you using this for? Yeah. Watch telly. It's just, it's a mad world, isn't it? I just looked at it and I was just like, what is wrong with these people? I don't know. What is wrong with it? And also, not not necessarily what's wrong with these people is in the people doing it, because there's always been mentals, but the normalisation and acceptance of it. Yeah, that's the what worrying thing is. It's All like, of it is becoming... Yeah, that's, of course that's fine. Yeah. Not, not really. It's well, not that's really, the new but... normal, isn't it? You're mental as hell, <clears> and <throat> people are so confused, they'll just let you get away with it. It's... it's um. Well, because hate's fine, as long as it's it's aimed at the right people. Well, exactly. That's it, isn't it? That's yeah. the joke of it. If it was yeah. in reverse, you'd have fucking every anti-hate group in the on the planet jumping all over it. Of course. The, the ADL would be going bonkers. Yeah, but they don't. C CNN would have have a fucking 24-hour special. <laughs> yeah. No, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Well, they're like lambs to the slaughter, aren't they? And um, speaking of lambs, we might come to that one later, but um, it makes me feel a bit sick, so we'll do this one first. Um, new no, people voluntarily line up to have their eyeballs scanned with a world coin orb to get a digital ID. They're literally lining up for this stuff now. Uh, I mean, how many years do we have to speak about this stuff before they get it? This is in India, I believe. Verified humans, they're called. Verified humans. I'm not convinced they are human. Well, they won't be as soon as they they're, get there. They're, they're non-player characters. That's what they are. That's why they're lining up. I just don't. Yeah, you. you that's actually what our Thorazine talks about. I'm talking about that the lady, um, in, in next week about NPCs and how she sees them and, and the possession element of that. But this is in London, Tokyo, and Bulgaria. Oh, Bagalo, no, <laughs> Bengala, Bengalari, Bengalaru, Bengalaru. Um, people around the world are getting their eyeballs scanned in exchange for digital ID and a promise of free cryptocurrency. Shrugging off concerns among I promise, yeah, <laughs> among privacy campaigners and data regulators. Ah, fuck it, fuck it. They promised me a burger. You give me your bank account details, and I promise I won't rob you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Have a. Have a. Found founded by Sam Altman, um, the CEO of ChatGBT. A developer of OpenAI, yeah, well done. 
all of this stuff. The Wellcoin project says it aims to create a new identity and financial network and that its digital ID will allow users to, among other things, prove online that they are human and not a bot. How do you have to prove that you're human? Where yeah. Verified humans, you have to prove that you're human now. We've got to the point where you, you can't be trusted whether you're human or not. Can you see what's happening? Like that the whole trust and the understanding of who's who, what's what, are you male, female, are you a clone or a bot, Jamie Foxx, all of this stuff, and now you've got to prove whether you're actually a valid human or not. It, it, it's just dissolving any understanding of what is real and what's fancy. I got accused of being a bot this week. Did you? And actually people just all agreed that, well, they didn't all agree, but a group of people agreed that I must be a bot that was created by Shell. <laughs> As in the, the you you know, petrol oil company. What, on Twitter? Yeah, because Jeremy Corbyn um, jumped on the climate bollocks because he's, you know, whatever. So I just commented on it going, are you are you easily fooled or easily bought, mate? Mm. Like, which one is it? Because it's one or the other. Yeah. Um, especially given who his brother is. And I obviously, say bought. probably. He's not an idiot. And, um, yeah, some of the comments agreed. Some were just like, he's, he's more, more fucking trustworthy than, is he? Is he? Um, and yeah, one was like, oh no, just ignore him, he's just a Shell bot. And then this whole com- conversation between these people went on about how I was a bot account created by Shell. <laughs> and I was thinking, sometimes I wish I was. Yeah, sometimes I wish I was. And, and like, sometimes you think, you find out, you go, like with the whole um, uh, Westworld thing, as you found out that you were just a, like a creation of something else, you'd be like, well, I am anyway. As long as yeah. I'm aware of it, does it really matter? Do um, you think they'd pay off my mortgage? Yeah. <laughs> Control alt delete. Sometimes they left they could shut me down so I could black out for a little while. It'd be lovely. Or have some sleep. The verified human, well coin users queue up for iris scan. So if you don't get you you can't be a verified human. Oh, it's just like it's such an inversion, isn't it? So you're getting a computer that's a thing that you made to verify whether you're human or not. It's like me scanning a video into my computer and then asking the computer, What do you think? It's like, like, is it good enough? It's the fucking computer. No, you can see it's all coming together all at once, though, isn't it? Very quickly, so it shows how desperate they are. Everything is all at the same time. Normally, they give you like one thing, and then they like sort of give you a minute to breathe, and then they fire the next thing at you. Um, <clears throat> but that just shows, as I say, how desperate they are because they're firing everything. And they've, yeah. since the Rona, which didn't do what they wanted it to do. Um, they're desperate, they're absolutely yeah. desperate to be firing everything. Including and Ukraine didn't do what they thought either. No. People are woken up to it. People just yeah. think, ah, fuck this. And the climate shit, they're going absolute fucking hell for leather on. But also the gender thing it is so strange, right? So I saw um, a video from, it's the Women's World Cup at the minute, right? Out in Australia and New Zealand. And um, Algeria, I think it was Algeria, pretty sure it was Algeria, had, had played a match. And so post-game, so you've got the manager there, you've got the captain, maybe another player who scored a goal or whatever. And so there's all the, the different, you know, media bobbleheads asking questions, you know, like, you know, how would the game go and all this sort of stuff, you know, what do you think of this? Oh, yeah, you know, it was a great editor at the far post, whatever. You know, normal generic football chat. Then it comes to the BBC. All right, different, isn't it? I know I'm here covering the World Cup, but I don't want to talk about football. So when, um, this is for, you know, so and so so BBC. This question goes to, you know, whoever the captain woman is. Homosexuality and gay relationships are illegal in Algeria. Do you have any teammates that are gay? And if so, how is it for them to be in a nation where it's illegal, right? So she obviously then just goes, well, that's a political question. We're going to talk about football or words to that effect. Yeah. But I thought to myself, one, what a stupid virtue signaling shit question. Just ask them about football. Yeah. The second thing is, it's nothing to do with her. She's just there to play football. She's a footballer. She's not yeah. the president. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And sec- and thirdly, perhaps more importantly, if she did have gay teammates, you're asking her to fucking out them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they can go back to a country where it's illegal. Have you got what any you gay do? teammates? Um, no. Not that I know of. I mean, what are you doing? Like... Yeah. It's just extraordinary, isn't I mean, it? I That's think just the gay BBC ones are, for you. I think the other team have got a load of them. <laughs> it, I just, again, it's like that Dr. Um, Tanya Roth, she, her. So why are you trying to, what? Can Mentally people not 
Can you not just enjoy something like a game of football? I mean, it's bread and circuses, but that's okay if you know that's what it is. It's people escaping from... Yeah. You know, people don't need this shit all the time. Because they're mentally ill, mate, and that's what it is. They, they're getting cookies, they're getting little likes and clicks and thumbs up and love me, love me's from being mentally ill. They're being entrained to be mentally ill outwardly, and it's Pavlov's dog, isn't it? It's like the ringing the bell. Every time they do a mentally ill thing, they get a treat. It's just bonkers. Yeah, it's The BBC bonkers, yeah. is insane. Yeah, that one should... It, really it, um... Let's have a look at it. So let's go. We haven't covered this yet. Shaka Hislop. He's on the naughty step from VSG. He's not gone on the tour of Japan. What have you missed? What have you seen? Shaq! Shaq! <laughs> Wait, we need some help. We need Benedict. Ready, go. Ready, go. Okay. Um, he, he just went, didn't he? Um, he did, yeah. He put he pushed the jab. Apparently, someone was telling me the other day. I didn't know if he did or not. I've not seen evidence of it, but no. apparently he was he was quite a jab pusher. Um, Trevor Francis died the next day. He was in his early sixties, but fit as a fiddle. Trevor um, Francis died, didn't he? Yeah, and then the following day, Chris Bart Williams, who used to play for Sheffield Wednesday yeah. and Nottingham Forest, only forty nine years old, just dropped dead. Um, really. He's out in America coaching and has been for the last few years. So she, he would have had to have had the compliance juice to have been yeah. out there during that period. Um, and you just think... How many more? How many more? There was that Tory lady, the the singer. She um, had blood clots in her leg and went a bit wobbly. And, and her lungs, yeah. And her leg lungs. And lungs, yeah. And there was another one, and I can't remember the top of my head. Well, who um, was. what's his face? The LeBron James. LeBron James' son, the, yeah. The basketball player the, who's a massive woker. His son... At 18, had a cardiac arrest during and basketball they were training. All they know that it's definitely were all jabbed. Because that's all, that's totally normal. I mean, 18 year olds were always having cardiac arrests when I was a kid. Uh, it's just the, the fact that you put it, I know you've got all these <clears> lefty <throat> lunatics going, they don't mean for jab. They mean, how much more evidence do you, do you need? They're not got, they don't want to know because they know they were wrong. Um, and no. it's a real shame. And uh, but people were dying before, yes, thousands, for millions of years. But it's the context of what they're dying of. And the age. They yeah, weren't that... dying of heart attacks and they were not dying of blood clots and they were not falling over in the street to the extent that they are. You might get one in a million that do it now and again. This is a well, trend. Classing on live television. That didn't happen. No, it didn't. It's that didn't happen. The and the thing, but what's funny is, that, is, the, is the, the flip with these guys. So they've spent two and a half years saying that everyone who died of anything was a COVID death. I mean, you're going, you know, people died before. Yeah. That guy fell off a ladder. Yeah, well, he wouldn't have fallen off if he didn't have COVID, right? To then just flip to the fact that, oh, no, 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 this is totally normal. It's fine. People always die. 18 year olds are cardiac arrest, did they? But it's the but, symptoms, like you just said then. A guy fell off the ladder and died. This guy is falling over on live TV and they're saying he's got blood clots. It's not the yeah, same thing. No, you, exactly. You're taking a load of information out of there. It's like taking the middle part out of a fucking Bible. Well, and these are famous. Nonsense, these are famous athletes, which is the only reason we know about them. Yeah. If this was Joe Bloggs down at the bus depot collapsing, no one would know about it. No. How many more people is this happening to? Uh, millions, I would say. Um, yeah. So he Shaka Hislop went, um, fell over. He's all right now, but then there'll be long term effects of that that they'll call lung curved. Cause well, they're trying their best. I, my mate Craig sent me a link to this thing where he's saying. You've seen that they're they're talking because obviously heart disease is going up, all these heart attacks and all this sort of stuff, which is nothing to do with that, obviously. Um, and now, so they're saying it's air pollution that's causing it. So you're like, you've literally you're masking the the um, the fallout of something you've pushed on everyone, by it. You're masking it by saying it's something else that you're forcing on everyone that's responsible for it. Well, it's just, clever. It, it it's, just it's, not, it's not very imaginative. <laughs> no, it but. isn't. It's not imaginative. Then you've got Elon Musk, and we put out some stuff on your dad's website today. His rockets are shooting holes in the ionosphere. So what's getting in there? So, you know, it could be that, could be contributing to these people and what they've got in their body. There should be a connection there. There's something very wrong, and we need to be looking at it like adults, not children going, having a little political spasm over it. Well, who's coming through the holes? We're going to need the freaking Avengers eventually, aren't we? <laughs> well, if we... It's like a doorway. If we can get in, they, if we can get, they can get in, we can get out. You'd hope so. Maybe. I'm not, I'm not ready for the astral yet. No, I like it here. It's for laugh, isn't it? 
Go on, then. Next one. It's bonkers, yeah, but that is, you know, yeah, like you say, it's funny. Okay, I'll stick with the BBC then, because I had the BBC as my last one. Nigel Farage, you know, they've had to, they've had to apologise for to Nigel Farage for reporting as fact false information that they've received from a trusted source within the NatWest Bank, who's now had to quit. <laughs> now, lots of the sort of lefty loonies um, who hate Farage um, because. He disagrees with them politically, so therefore that makes him a hate figure. Um, they were jumping on the fact that this person had quit and they shouldn't have to have quit. It's like, OK, so they work within high up within a bank. They gave false information about a customer's account, which is confidential, to a mainstream, national media yeah. mainstream. Yeah, they kind of do have to go. Yeah. Sorry. Not really into cancel culture, but I'm not really sure you can keep your job after that, if I'm honest. That's the equivalent of shitting in a Big Mac. Like, you're not going to keep your job, mate. It's not going to happen. So the BBC then uh, had to apologise. They made me laugh because I was just looking at it. I was thinking, if only you had some kind of misinformation department, <laughs> you, might have seen, you might have seen it. What do you mean it came from the misinformation department? Where's Mariana? Oh, yeah. She's off today. Oh, that's annoying. <laughs> she's she's holidaying in Russia. Who did she tell that that information to? Can we just... Who's Mariana Spring? I just wrote that down. There. It's been, it's just a, I'll, I'll send that to the misinformation department and we'll get that checked. Oh, it came from there. Oh, it came from... Now I'm confused. So we just it's whack just, it out? Yeah, it's just not nonsense, isn't it? Yeah. Like, and the, the the idea from these people that it's actually okay as well. It's fine that you can lie about him. It's fine that he can have his bank account shut down because he says things I don't like. That's basically it. Yeah, wait until it happens to you, which it will because you haven't got your iris scanned. Well, this is the thing, isn't it's it? Like, so it's short -sighted. so short-sighted. It's easy to see what's happening here. And it's like, oh, but then get, I, I mean, at best now, I'm hoping that they go over there and live in their little smart cities and we're allowed to just, we just, we're not allowed, we will do. Stay over here and go, do you know what, I'm going to have to learn how to fucking plant some beetroot i'm fine with that i like I'm doing that we'll all just get together and live in a little like fuck it what more do we need i don't, want to, live in, I don't want to i don't want to live in in that reality anyway what like, would you do for a living me. you could play music and you could play songs around the campfire i'll be yeah, a storyteller yeah we'd find we'd find a way give us a bit of chicken and i'll tell you a story that's fine yeah oh, yeah but um, yeah so that that amused me anyway the fact that they just you know just chat shit it's still going on though. I mean, climate, the climate change is uh, MAGA's fault as well, according to Mrs. Hillary. Kill everyone, Clinton. Oh. Cool down, Hillary. It says Clinton claims MAGA Republicans are to blame for historic heat across the US in call to vote them out of office. <laughs> Hillary Clinton blamed the record-breaking heat wave, which it wasn't, on MAGA Republicans in a tweet Tuesday. The Democrats' 2016 nominee shared a we lost a post from a group associated with the left-leaning think tank for center. The Centre for American Progress. Never heard of them. Well, they're the ones Cat. that they're ones that are basically fucking um, involved with the CCDH, Centre for Counter Digital oh, Hate. I of think. Of course they are. Yeah. yeah. So they're that they're like Podesta and all that lot, aren't they? Oh, I'm pretty God, sure really? Centre for American Pizza Progress. Break. Yeah. Which said MAGA Republicans are pouring fuel on the climate crisis fire. Clinton indicated she agreed with that message. Oh, what an idiot! What an absolute moron! So. Yeah, so her th it says, hot enough for you, she said, the former Secretary of State have asked, thank a MABA, MAGA Republican, or better yet, vote them out of office. Aren't you the government? Oh, I just... just, just it's just so desperate, isn't it? And the it's climate so... stuff is mad. And they, they, oh. all the all the blue tick bobbleheads, you Gary Lineker's, all these fucking virtue signaling little shits, I wonder have all come are. out, Deborah Mead and the lot of them, they've all come out word for word almost, tweeting the same shit about these fires in Greece that were started by humans. But then Meaden, who I've been sending this bloody stuff to about the first... I just spam her thing with first global revolution quotes um, and pictures because people in the comments at least get to read it. Um, she doubled down. Like, she, she got it wrong and didn't yeah. apologise for she it. She said, oh, yeah, it might be arson, but... But the wind but... blew it. That's basically what she said. Yeah, but that's what happens. But, wind, wind, blows, wind blows stuff. Well, they might have started a fire, but because of climate, the wind, the, the climate wind, blew it and then it spread. Fucking hell. Yeah. You, you clearly, clearly only got to be a millionaire because 
you are a complete sellout, not a fucking Einstein. No, but it's the same in like Spain. The, the, there was these fires in Spain, they're going, all oh, climate change. And then it transpired that actually some guy had robbed somewhere and then taken his car off and set fire to it, top of a mountain, set these bushfires off. So what is the climate doing then? Is it making people mental? Well, yeah, it's making you mental. It's making but... him mental because Elon Musk's firing holes in the ionosphere and it's fucking making you go mad because you're all jabbed to hell. That's I, 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 you know, I, there was a question we asked for this week's show. You know, who's behind these arsons? Because I'm not having it in the same way with the Rona. I'm not having it that they had all these plans to introduce this draconian shite and they just sat back and waited and they poured themselves a, a, a pina colada and then a virus appeared and they were from a bat soup and went, let's use it for that. Go. Not having it. Yeah. And it's the same with this. Put a tweet in drafts about the climate and we'll just wait. And if someone starts a fire somewhere, we'll press send. <laughs> My ass. Someone's setting these fires. Don't let Joe Biden, Joe Biden near it. And don't, don't let that I'm... woman near it who, who talked about the bloody towers coming down when it was still in the background. We can't have another one of them. No, that's the BBC again. But I've got sent an interesting picture with this, right? So there's an area in the middle of roads where they were wanting to build this wind farm, but the forest there is known as a prime forest. I actually know what that means. I'm, I'm assuming it maybe means it's significant in one, whatever reason. It's a prime forest, so you can't do it with that. And they show the two maps of where the fires are and where the proposed wind farm is. It's right. pretty lucky. It's pretty lucky. So what are they suggesting with that? I've lost the train of thought there. So what they, what's the Well, the, the fires have started on purpose because as soon as that, that... I mean, can we build a wind farm on top of that prime forest, please? No, you can't. All oh, right. Can we build a wind farm on top of that charred wasteland, please? Fill your boots, mate. Right, OK, sorry. So clear the area. Yeah. If you show the map, I, I retweeted it so you'll be able to find it, Aidan. You, it's, um, I mean, it's, it's uncanny. Do you know what I mean? It's uncanny. Yeah, it's, yeah, like insu- it's like insurance season on the Isle of Wight, right? When I was a kid, loads of hotels, not anymore. There's an insurance there used to be season. Insurance season. Never so you'd have, all the, you'd have all these hotels and they'd close in October. Some would reopen a bit over Christmas maybe, but generally they would close in October and then open again in May. And that was your holiday season for your like shearings, coaches, all your blue rinsed perm old, old people coming down and eating ice cream and whinging. And um, so around about March, generally, f- hotels would just start going up. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it burnt down. Yeah, no, it's insurance season, isn't it? They didn't have a great season right. last year. Got you. Dead yeah. common, dead yeah. common. Yeah. Insurance season, they call it on the Isle of Wight. And it's probably the same in like somewhere like Eastbourne or... or Hastings or whatever, do you know what I mean? It's probably exactly the same thing. Well, it was a little bit the same as the Twin Towers. Didn't the guy get insured like three months before? Like Didn't before he quadruple his, his insurance um, and, and add terrorism to his insurance policy? So Larry Silverstein. That's it, you're Larry Silverstein. I had a dermatology appointment, man. I was meant to be in the windows of the world eating my, my eggs Benedict, but I just happen to have... He's, he's gone southern suddenly. Yeah. I just, I just happen to have... Hair, hair. All right, Forrest. Well, it, just, it just happened to have an appointment and I didn't even make the appointment because that would make me guilty because maybe I made the appointment so I wasn't there my wife made it so if anything my wife brought the towers down alright Larry her fault how you doing Larry you've yeah. got, you got a few quid there you've you, got a little money you got a little bit of money you you um, cleared up your dermatology problem there your skin looks fine you still look like a cunt to me um, right uh, I no should for that <laughs> Um, should we do this one? Oh, let's do let's do non biological humans. Let's do that one. So, um, like a sex doll. It's not a sex doll. No, it's not a sex doll. Um, they've fake alien invasion is ramping up, isn't it? So we're all looking forward to this one, big time. Because it's the last one on the list, isn't it? Before the reptilians come out of the caves. So fake alien invasion ramping up. Breaking: The US has recovered non human biological pilots from a crashed craft and. Um, this is a, like a Mr. Grunch, Grush, which might be a play on the Grinch. Um, he looks like a typical CIA like asset, but um, there you go. Um, if you believe we have crashed craft, uh, stated earlier, do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? As I've stated publicly already in my News Nation interview, uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries. Yeah. There's uh, non biological entities that they found in the crash. From people he's heard this from, so he hasn't seen them. People still on the program he's heard it from, the program, Secret Space Program. 
and um, he can give a specific list of people that will be compliant and talk about it. So this is all ramping up, obviously, as a as a disclosure nonsense that they've yeah. been coming out with for a long, long time. Obviously, being part of the alternative media, and we've seen this coming for probably twenty years. Were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. But yeah. it really is now looking like that they're going to play that card and in the next five, three or four years, I reckon. Um, I think so. I and think I don't they're... think it's going to be Project Bluebeam. I think that's way behind the tech they've actually got. Oh, probably, yeah. But they've got all these different things that they're going to then kind of bring into one. So I can imagine that this mothership comes... <laughs> Oh my god! Like this is fucking terrifying. And then from nowhere, like Zelensky and Greta Thunberg both in a fighter jet, right? And Jesus, fly up into into the mothership like on Independence Day, yeah. right? And it blows up, and they're hailed as heroes. And then everyone says, "Do you know what? What we should do to commemorate them is we should destroy Russia and make sure that we follow up with." Uh, net zero so we do that and then it destroys the planet which makes it more inhabitable for the race that came in that mothership and then they all come in and take over i mean you well we're still doing this but yeah we'll still do this I'll still be doing this can you see him? But, uh... hello mate are you just dribbling on the what <laughs> that's new um yeah we'll still be doing this um and everyone will look like mike pence and everyone who's against it will have to look like, um, will have to dress up or look exactly like a clone of Donald Trump because he's the devil he in Canada. The devil. So everyone would have to look like him. Anybody left would have to live underground. we just do this underground. Isn't it? Yeah, do you know what I mean? There's, a, there's about as much sunlight underground as there is in the UK at the minute. Climate change, isn't it? So how do you change the climate? Britain yeah. didn't get the memo about the heat wave, did it? <laughs> no, it didn't. It's fucking pissing, freezing. It's pissing it down here, and we didn't even get our clothes in. They're all wet on the line. So, yeah, so they've got non-biological human entities that they've found in a craft now. So they're gearing up for this. I think you're right. There's going to be some sort of major... La like, it'll be that end times nonsense, won't it? Um, yeah, and it'll many, be war of the worlds many, again. many people will believe it, and they'll bring it on by looting houses, by going mad. It'll be like... It, what's that... What's that one where they can all go out and kill, the, kill the, people? The purge. The purge. It'll be like that. Um, yeah. But it's a film I don't... about cats. <laughs> the Persian. Um, I, I don't think we'll be alive to see that, though. I think that'll be way beyond our, our days here on planet Turf. I'm never dying, me. Are we over your... Well, that's true. Because you've... Yeah, if you're immortal. I think that was part of the deal, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The deal with the, the, deal with the devil. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Um, talking of deals with the devil, Richard Branson, who, according to one website, is my father. Um, <laughs> do you remember that? Yeah. I'm Sam Branson. And I just remember, because we've gone to such trouble, like pinpointing certain parts of the face, right? And um, someone going, well, because I was still a musician at the time. Oh, well, why, why doesn't he just sign for, why doesn't Branson just sign his son to Virgin then? And the reply was, that would be too obvious. I love that. Yeah. Stupid. It's a crime. Yeah. What's it's... funny though is what they could have picked on was the fact that I'd done an advert for Virgin. Right. For Virgin did. Media, um, doing this stupid dance in a previous life, and I was a PT at Virgin Active. So yeah. I was. I mean, I was bang to right. That's it. Um, they could have really got it. Yeah. Yeah. Really, yeah. But they missed it. Missed, I mean, they missed the chance. Um, but yeah, Richard Branson. He met um, Epstein. As, who didn't? Apart from me and you, um, for breakfast. Um, well after he'd been convicted and, you know, all that sort of stuff for child uh, abuse and trafficking and all this kind of stuff. Um, is anything going to happen to Branson? Anyone going to ask any questions? No, of course uh, not. Ah, don't worry about it, mate. Branson's been protected since the late 70s when he was arrested and convicted of illegally importing records into the country, blacklist records, black label records. And he was he was put in prison, like for the night, I think, um, and his bail was like £65,000, which was a lot of money back then. His mum and dad, were well, they were well connected and got him out and even got that expunged from the, the from the, the what's criminal record. He doesn't have a criminal record, but that happened. And he was being protected. Then he's, he had to sell out at that point or he was going to jail for a very long time. Um, so he's been 
part of the system since then. I mean, he was on he when he touched down in Israel, wasn't he kissing the floor? Probably. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure he was kissing the floor in Israel at the tarmac. Oh, it was great to be here. He's. You do not have breakfast with someone you know who is a convicted paedophile and just no. think that that's all you right. Don't. And he's but got also, an island as well. Yeah, in the same area. But my, I think, but my um, alarm bells with Richard Branson um, started ringing for me when he was tied up and dead on top of that big, massive girt rock. And like Mr. Tumnus was there and they were all getting dead upset. And then he came back to life. And suddenly, fucking Aslan was not dead anymore. Is this a dream? He looks like Aslan from <laughs> Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Oh, he does, yeah. I haven't seen Lion, the Witch, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Oh, were you one of those watching Bullseye instead? <laughs> and that was on telly. Probably, yeah. yeah. I, re- I remember when I should I was... have watched it. I, I know, but I, I don't know why I've not watched it. I just haven't. When I was a kid, right, me and my sister had watched this, I think it was like a four-part or a five-part series, or probably a six-part series, to be fair, like the normal of Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And it was the sixth part, right? So we got to the end, nearly. And we'd gone up to um, to stay with my, my dad's mum up in Leicester, and they always watched Bullseye at six, right? That's how I know they were on at the same time. They always watched Bullseye, and me and Kerry were like, but these are the days before like Challenge TV and, and so like, you, you can't, it's a choice. You can't, if, you, if we're watching Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, you ain't watching Bullseye. It ain't and coming gonna, back. It ain't coming back. Okay. You're never going to see whether they won the speedboat or not. They didn't because they never did. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we won the battle and ended up watching did um, Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. Yeah. What did you, you have to do? You, you don't fuck with the sisters, yeah, to be fair. No, no. <laughs> so sure. everyone just went, just put Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. On, on, honestly, because it will be like Narnia in here, if not. It will be, yeah. It'd be like Snow Snow Queen, Snow Witch or whatever she was. Yeah. Um so yeah, I haven't seen that, but yeah, Branson is has always been a dodgy one for me. Um the whole virgin thing of saying oh we were virgin businesses and all of that like still like shit. Um yeah. he's definitely connected in, in some ways to that. Um, well, people are people are asking some questions of him now though, so he's essentially in a little bit of trouble. And what annoyed me is what headline would you have gone for? Bearing Richard Branson could find himself in a little bit of trouble here because of the fact that he's met with Epstein. He's got some questions to answer. I've Um, got my headline. Something about virgins. Um, No, actually not. You can uh, go for that one then if that's the way you go. Oh, okay. Epstein spotted dick for breakfast. Okay. I'd have gone with, because you could have gone for like, virgin on the ridiculous or whatever or or you know i'd gone with branson in a pickle lazy yeah it's, it's very english it's very yeah. english but it's it's like, also non-offensive it's kind of like branson in a pickle. cheeky in it yeah, no, yeah a bit like cheeky. It. it's a sun headline isn't it it is yeah like like when um princess margaret died creme de la creme because <laughs> she was cremated or versace shoot you sir unbelievable Brilliant. Yeah. I, I like pun headlines. I've got to say, I, like, I can't stand News Corp and Sun and News of the World and all that lot, but the odd pun headline I'm quite a fan of. I, I told you one before about Callum Ball when he scored two goals for Derby, 1-2-1. One, one. It said, ball bags too. That's, <laughs> Brilliant. that's what it's all about. Yeah. That's what the media should be there for. Yeah, just to sort of laugh at the, the world. This is what we why we do what we do. But how can they get hold of their, um, their uh, CBD oil? Um, they can go to supremecbd.uk and they can use the code WTAF. Um, speaking like, who speaks like that? Tony Blair was a bit like that one, eh? Um, and they can get 40% off stuff, um, which will help them. Yeah, he did. He's both stuff. Like that. Yep. Dick. No, no, Tim. Yeah, the politicians have a way, and that, they love that, don't they? Although, do you know what, right? Because I because I did Barry Bobblehead last week, right? And I was doing that. It was that, great, by the way. Right? When I did the monologue yesterday for tonight's show, I found myself doing that. And I was like, oh, no, that's a thing now. Yeah. Politicians do that. You're going to want a point because that's aggressive. And you can't yeah. have that because then it's like, right. Yeah. So it's that. Doosh, doosh. Yeah. Like that? I, I, yeah, you'll morph into Barry Bobblehead. That was very good. I think you should do some more of them. Definitely. Um... Yes, so guys, thank you for listening to What Af, um, and we'll hope to see you in a week's time. Keep your chin out of the freezer. 
Can I tell you a story, right? Go on then. Quickly before we go. I used to share a flat on the Isle of Wight when I was like 15, 16 with a bunch of people. And one of them, a lad called Sam, Sam liked to drink, right? But he was one of those people that went, like he'd do 10 pints, and fine. And then he'd have half a cider and he'd, <clears throat> like, it's that would just tip like that. Like, whereas people gradually get pissed. He'd, he'd be fine to, 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 to drive a, a school bus and then he'd suddenly just go bang, right? Anyway, so we're all sat around drinking, and he went off to the um, to the kitchen to get some ice, right? I can't remember what we were drinking. No, anyway, it was a fucking made-up cocktail or whatever. All of a sudden, he's, he's not he's not come back for ages. So we're like, fuck, Sam, dude, I'm fucking drinks not being warm. Right? He went out, right? He's on his hands and knees, right? He's got a pizza under his arm, and his head is in the freezer, and he's fast asleep, right? And his head was literally on the ice of the shelf, like just fast asleep. We managed to like pull him off. Luckily, he hadn't, as in pull him off the freezer. Yeah, not horny. Yeah, quick. He's not looking. Like, and he honestly just had this red line here. Car. Unbelievable. Right? He'd been any bit longer. He might have been stuck to that. Imagine being able to fall asleep with your head in the freezer. <laughs> it's short, really. That's how drunk you want to get. Yeah. Isn't it? Goals. See you later, guys. We'll speak to you in a week's time. Please share the clips and remember that. On my show this week is Arthorazine. Um, he's talking about um, translocation of demons. And on Gaz's show, there's many a guest, including... Monica Schmidt, which is a really cool interview. She's very kind of avid as well about, you know, us being ready now for the fight. We weren't ready before COVID, she, she suggests. I think she's probably right. Whereas now people are battle-hardened. So bring it the fuck on. That's it. See you soon. Take care. Goodbye. <laughs>